I'm just using my trusty spoon to reach the button on my camera to make sure that it's uh, awake and ready for this live lesson. Hi, everybody. We'll start in about 38 seconds. Let me just uh, double check to make sure everything is working. Make sure everything is working. I'm, uh, it gets weird because I'm listening to myself, making sure the audio is working. We'll start, uh, I guess we'll start in about 18, 17 seconds. Everything seems to be working great. By the way, I know I'm tiny on the screen right now. It is beautiful outside. You'll see that in just a moment in seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this outdoor question and answer English lesson. If you're not sure how this works, there will be a question linked in the chat. Members can actually pull up the link by typing an exclamation mark in the word link, and I'm sure one or two of them will do that in a moment. Uh, and please use that link to ask your question. Once you've asked the question, I will pull it up on the screen and I will read your question and I will try my best to answer it. Well, it's beautiful outside here today. Um, it is a gorgeous, almost feels like summer. Even though it's September 2nd today, it feels a little bit like summer. I thought it was going to feel like fall, but it feels like summer. It is a long weekend here in Canada. A long weekend is a weekend where you have either the Friday or the Monday as a holiday. Here in Canada, Monday is a holiday and Tuesday is the first day of school. So teachers and students, I think, are all very excited about that or nervous or afraid. One of the, one of the above. I am actually looking forward to it. Um, I see uh, Helmuth in the chat saying, for real, is it live? Yes, it's live. Right now it's live. It is 10.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in Ontario, Canada. So, um, yes, welcome to this. Uh, if you have questions, ask them. I was going to also say, um, Dave is not here. For those of you that remember Todd last year, Dave and Todd used to be a team. Uh, Dave moderated after Todd wasn't able to for another eight months. Uh, Dave no longer has time to moderate. So I will be the moderator today. Um, what that means is that I will have to keep an eye on the chat. Um, I did build this in. I don't know if this will work. We'll see if this freaks anybody out. Let's see if it actually does something here. I told Nightbot to hand out warnings. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Sorry, Mode. that's just a little trick. There is no actual, um, there's no follow-up to that. But uh, members can give warnings to people. Nothing actually happens. It doesn't ban anybody. But if you are a member and you want to give a warning, you type the word, you type an exclamation mark and then the warning. Let's see if I can give myself a warning. Uh, and then it will just send a message uh, to that person. I'll adjust that over time uh, to make sure it works better. I'm not sure if it actually you know highlights your name or anything like that but then it says a warning has been given to i guess i can't warn myself um oh a warning was given to learn so it just took the first part of my name anyways enough about that i will look into making the chat more fun as well as building some kind of tool for members to alert me my ideal would be this that if someone is misbehaving in the chat a member can flag that person and then my phone will buzz and it'll say a member has uh, alerted you to a misbehavior in the chat and then I'll pause the lesson. Anyways, enough about that. I need to answer some questions here. Um, by the way, um, I don't think the warning thing works more than every 30 seconds. Members, if you're all trying to give each other warnings. Uh, but anyways, let's get this lesson started. Did you want to see the river cam one more time uh, while I have a sip of water? If you're wondering why I'm drinking out of a bottle, I went on a long trip yesterday and I bought a bottle of water and I'm not done drinking it yet. So let me get the first question on the screen. Oh, wow. There's already seven questions. Um, here we go. What do we want? Question or question outside? Let's do this. The question's small. Maybe I'll do this. I'll read the question like this. Ruslan. Ruslan is fast. First question. Hello, dear teacher Bob. Versus time. If you were to choose an occupation, a pilot or a ship captain, which one would you prefer? 
Well, that's a great question. I think ship captain. I've always liked the idea of being on a ship. I toyed around with joining the Navy once in my life, not seriously, but um, planes are cool, but ships, there's a something calming about a ship for me. You know, the, you're on the open water and all of that stuff. So, I think maybe I would choose ship captain. Ruslan in the chat says, the landscape looks like the Shire from Lord of the Rings. I hope there's no hobbits. I hope there's no orcs around here. Hobbits would be fine, but uh, I hope there are no orcs. Next question. Let's get it big on the screen. Renata, hello, please pronounce Caribbean or Caribbean. The way you pronounce it in your everyday life with Jen, your kids, etc. Thank you. So, I use both and I don't know why I choose which. Like, I might be having a conversation and someone might say, oh, we went on a vacation. Oh, did you go to the Caribbean or did you go to the Caribbean? So, I'm not sure if it's an American British thing having two influences, but I pronounce it both ways. Next question from Judith. Hi, Judith. If you could start again and you would not have the chance to become a teacher, what would you choose to be? So, I've commented before that I think I should have been a farmer. So, when I was young, we had cows. We milked cows twice a day. So, we were dairy farmers. My parents were dairy farmers. I, I enjoyed it. I, I liked growing things more than taking care of the animals. Um, but I think I would have become a dairy farmer. Now, my parents insisted that my brothers and sisters and I all get an education after high school instead of becoming dairy farmers um, because they didn't think it was a very wise thing to do. They thought it wasn't a good business to be in. And it turns out they were wrong. It's actually a good idea to be a farmer in Ontario, Canada. Farmers do well. They don't make a lot of money, but they do well. Uh, next question from Yuri. Hi, how do we say this correctly? Oh, there is an apple, a mandarin, and an apricot on the table. Okay, so I didn't want to read both. I wanted to choose the right one. I don't like reading sentences out loud that are wrong. I want you to only hear correct sentences if possible. So, how do you say that? There is an apple, a mandarin, and an apricot on the table. That's how you would say that, Yuri. Great question. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Mode says, name the two seasons of Canada, winter and July. Yeah, so, I only know what I know. So, I grew up in Ontario, Canada um, and I only know that there is a summer and it's really hot in July. By the middle of August already, it starts to cool down at night. It's still quite hot during the day in August. Um, but I do know that uh, sometimes people joke that Canada only has two seasons. Not totally true though. We have a beautiful fall. In a week or so, the days will become cool and the nights will be cool. The leaves will start to turn color uh, and snow won't fly probably till November or even December. So, we'll see. Should be, should be very, very nice. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. This question is, let's make it bigger. Hello, Mr. Bob. Great to be with you. Just got from Brent Stream about household pests and I wonder what is the history behind the word bug in terms of annoying someone? I don't actually know the answer to that. All I know is that like flies and mosquitoes like to land on people and we would call them bugs. So, maybe because, you know, when a mosquito is trying to land on you, it's annoying. So, maybe that's where it came from. Maybe when we say someone is bugging me or that guy likes to bug people, it might mean that they're like a mosquito or a fly constantly being mean to them. Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. Do you use the words like lickety split, chop chop, and post haste? Thanks a lot. So, not a lot. We use lickety split, but older people use that. We don't use the word, uh, the phrase chop chop much anymore because it's considered insensitive because it's kind of making fun of how immigrants spoke hundreds of years ago. Um, and then post haste is very, very formal. We, we rarely use that one. We might use lickety split would be fairly common. Next question from Nima. Hello, dear Bob. What is the best practice for using articles correctly? I'm either overusing or underusing them. Many exceptional cases always get me lost. Thanks a lot. Yeah, this is a tough one because 
when I'm making my Friday lessons, so last, yesterday we did a lesson on games, by the way, was a fun lesson. I really enjoyed it. You can still watch it. Um, I don't even always know. Um, like I like to eat pizza. Uh, as soon as I use the, I'm talking about specific pizza. Um, but when you talk about like the pizza from that restaurant is gross, I'm using the, but I'm talking about all the pizza from that restaurant. So I think what I need to do, Nima, is uh, make a note of this and make a really, really good lesson about it is, about it sometime. Uh, Mode says, okay, someone is using my name to ask questions. Whoever that is, I don't know you, but I'm going to find you and I'm going to, that taken seed. Yeah. Mode has a particular set of skills. No. Anyways, Mode, I have to mention this. There are probably five modes in the comments. Just so you know, over time, I've noticed there are more of you and they're not all you. So maybe the name, uh, whether chosen or your real name is somewhat, uh, popular. It's good to have a popular name. Bob is a popular name <laughs> from Hung. Hi, Bob. What make you stay committed? Thanks for answering and making YouTube videos. Oh, thanks for answering and making YouTube videos for a long time. Have you ever felt like giving giving my question your student i think what you're asking is how do you stay committed to doing this um and to making youtube videos for a long time <laughs> i just like it i'm also someone where i start a lot of things and i quit a lot of things but when i start some things and like them i do them for a very long time so i like to do new things when i find a new thing i like like making english lessons on youtube um i uh I just keep doing it. It's lots of fun. New words with MP. So by the way, new words with MP asks what crops are famous in Canada and new words with MP has often gifted memberships to people during my live stream. So thank you for that. New words. I'm trying not to slurp my water, you know, early on in my career as a YouTuber, people would comment that I made loud slurping sounds while drinking. So I try really hard not to do that still. Um, Canada is famous for growing wheat. We grow a lot of corn. We grow a lot of soybeans. Um, we grow a lot of hay, which is what you feed to horses and cows. Um, and then if you move into other crops, we grow apples, we grow peaches, we grow grapes, not necessarily for export, but I think wheat would be one of our biggest crops for sure. I think it's probably, it might be the biggest. They grow a lot of wheat out West. From Lolly, Lolly, it said, the younger you are, the easier it's to learn, it is to learn a foreign language. So we wouldn't use a contraction there. Strange, English is strange. Do you think a person of 80 or more can learn a new language, merci Bob? There is a growing trend for retired people in the world to learn a second language because they have lots of time and they're actually quite good at it. And, it, and it's because of what I just said, they have lots of extra time. And learning a language is really, a lot of it is just about having the time to study and practice. So yes, I think a person 80 or more could learn a new language quite easily if they have time. Um, let me just try something for a minute. Let me see if this works. Um, it's probably not going to do his whole name, is it? If I give Brent a warning. Hi, hi Brent, by the way, I'm testing out my warning system on you. Nightbot's probably going to say, a warning has been given to speak. Please stop what you are doing. <laughs> so I'm going to have to figure out how to make it so it does the whole name. By the way, Brent, I was just replying to comments on our food video. Uh, and I was remembering how much fun that was. It seems like just like a week ago that Brent was here, but it has been a lot longer than that. So anyways, Brent, hope your school year is going good. I hope you are doing well out there in Maine. Helmuth, how do you maintain a farm and be a teacher at the same time? Do you have some workers or who does some work for you? So two things about that. Number one, Jen does most of the farm work and I help her out as much as I can. Okay. So number one, the flower farm is really Jen's business. Jen does have one person that comes and works for her for about three hours a week but she does all the rest of the work herself. And sometimes our kids help as well. F number two, farming and teaching 
are kind of opposite seasons. With teaching, I'm busy from September to June. And with farming, we're busy from May until October. So except where they overlap, um, it's actually not too hard to do both. Um, if I had to teach every day in July and August, then it wouldn't work very well. It would be very, very difficult. Um, from Darby. Hello, Bob. Long time, huh? I'm planning on moving to Canada. Any advice? Not really. Um, if you're coming from a warmer country, be prepared no matter where you move to that it might be a little colder. If you move to the province of British Columbia, the southern part, it's fairly warm in the winter, but it's still around zero degrees most days. If you move to any other part of Canada, be ready. Make sure you have many, many layers, okay? So if you wear a t-shirt and a winter coat, that's warm. But if you wear a t-shirt and a long sleeve shirt and a hoodie or sweatshirt and a winter coat, that's warmer. Layers are always the best way to dress in cold weather. That's pretty common advice for people um, uh, when they move to Canada. Dress in layers in the winter. In fact, I would say a t-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, a sweatshirt, and a jacket might be warmer than a t-shirt and a winter coat, believe it or not. I don't know why. I think layers trap the air. Nathan, Bob, how do you milk the cows? So we don't have cows anymore. When we did have cows, we had milk machines. A milk machine is a machine that you put on the, co on the cow's udder and it takes the milk out using vacuum. So it sucks the milk out. It's kind of, it's kind of strange to, to see, but uh, that's how you milk the cows. And then the milk goes into a pipe and it goes into a big tank that cools the milk off. That's, uh, that's, how, you, that's how you milk cows. Winter right. Hi, teacher Bob. The phrase eye to eye, is this a formal or informal one? So I would say it falls into the category of being both. You know, English is a little strange. I was trying to explain to someone the other day that there is no strict formal English and informal. If I was writing a letter of complaint using very formal English, I would use the phrase eye to eye. If I was talking to a colleague, I might say, we just don't see eye to eye. And one conversation might be formal and might, one might be very, very informal. But we often, what I was trying to say is we often use informal English in very formal situations. You would be surprised at how I speak in my classroom as a teacher. You would think I would be very formal, but I'm actually, I use formal and informal English in my teaching. And, and that's pretty common. Um, even in the business world, to use formal and informal. No, that has a question. Hi, Bob. I came the word, I came across the word ought to. If I'm right, it has a similar meaning to should. If so, could I use it interchangeably? Is it a commonly used word? Thanks, sir. So I ought to buy some new shirts because these are getting old. This shirt is 20 years old, by the way, and it's, it's getting a little thin. I don't know if I should wear this. I might wear it this year with a sweater over top because I think it's getting a little thin um, to wear otherwise. Um, yeah, you can use it the same way. Yeah, I ought to get a new van. We, we don't, ought, it's harder to say, like I should get a new van. I ought to get a new van. Um, I think we use it a lot when we're telling other people what they should do. You know, you ought to start exercising or something like that. Yes, possibly. That's a good question, by the way. Sammy, have you ever had an addiction and how did you overcome it? So I have not had any of the serious addictions except for one. I did smoke cigarettes, tobacco, when I was a university student for about a year and a half. Um, and how did I overcome it? I just stopped. I think I have a lot of willpower. But I have not had any of the more serious addictions. Like I, I, I don't like drugs. I don't like, uh, like none of that stuff appeals to me. But don't even want to try it. Um, and things like alcohol, I will have maybe one beer a week. So I don't, I've never experienced that. So I have a lot of compassion for people who suffer from addiction. I think it's very, very difficult if you are suffering from it. But for me, I would say the only thing I know is I did used to smoke. 
And uh, one day I just decided to stop and I stopped. So I think I have a lot of, well, willpower means when you decide something, it's, it's a permanent decision. From Fadi, good morning, teacher Bob. Hope you are well. Have you ever visited Halifax in Canada? Little fix with visited there. I am living here and hope one day I can meet you. Have a nice day. I have, I think when I was a kid, I know we went on a trip to Nova Scotia. That's the province where Halifax is. Halifax is a city in Nova Scotia. And I don't remember if we actually went to the city or not. I was quite young at the time. So, um, yes, I'll have to remember that. I do see some people asking questions in the chat. That's one thing where I should probably set up a night bot timer just to remind people, please use the form. Uh, if you have a question, it makes things a little bit easier for me. Uh, here's a look at the river while I have a sip of water. I'm drinking a lot more water than normal today. I'm a little worried because, uh, next week I have to start teaching. And one of the first things that happens to teachers the first week of school is they start to lose their voice a little bit. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen to me. Here we go. Tina. Hello, Bob. The eaves of the forest were very near. What does the word eaves mean here? I wouldn't use eaves with forest. So eaves are generally something on a house. Um, let's see if it has another meaning. Like the eaves are like the corner of the roof. The part of a roof that meets or overhangs the walls. Yeah, so I only am familiar with it as that. Like where the roof of a house meets the wall, we call that part the eaves. And then where the rainwater goes in Canada, we call it eaves trough. So um, maybe they just mean where the forest um, meets the grass or something. Maybe they're using it creatively. That's possible. Uh, let's see here. Real joker mode. Hi, Mr. Bob. Could you please explain the phrase all in good time and give example sentences? Ah, 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 no cheating. Remember that we just, what we discussed yesterday. So yesterday we discussed this cheating, cheating when you are playing a game means not to follow the rules to your own advantage. That was part of yesterday's lesson, uh, on games. So here we go. Um, so all in good time means basically to be patient or you're recommending that someone is patient. If someone was, oh, here's a great example. The link in the description below to ask questions, I only put it in the description about 30 seconds before the video starts. Sometimes in the chat, people will say, where's the link? And a great response would be all in good time. I'll put the link there in about five minutes. So that basically means please be patient. If I brought treats to school, like if I brought candy or chocolate for my class. And if I said, I brought some treats for you today. And if the students were like, um, we want it now, I might say all in good time. We're going to do some work first and I'll give you the candies at the end of class. So it's a really a good way to say, please be patient. And then now I have to cheat. So meaning of all in good time, let's make sure Bob was correct. Used to tell someone to be patient because the thing they are eager for will happen when the time is right. Well, that's a great definition. I wish I had said that one. I kind of did, but using different words. So great question. Let's see here. Next question from Kevin. Thanks for the question mode, by the way. Hi, Bob. I like playing 3D video games like Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, to learn some English. Do you think that is a good idea for learning English? So I... I'm pointing, am I getting ready to teach? I'm, I'm talking like this a lot today with video games. Um, there's a couple things that I recommend. Number one, obviously switch the language of the video game to English. Number two, if you can in any way play cooperatively with other English players and have voice chat with them while you're playing, that is very, very good. I played a little bit of what game was it? World of Warcraft on a French server a long time ago. And then I could chat with people in French. So certainly change the language of the game to English. So you hear English and read English on the screen. But if you can also see if you can find um, some English uh, speaking players to play with. Mode in the chat says your definition was more natural and that's what matters to me. 
Thank you. I like to come up with examples where I'd actually use it. Like the, the, the link in the description is a great example. All in good time. Be patient. Let's see. Kyra says, hi, teacher. Is it possible to learn English through revelation? Thanks. So, so if by revelation you mean immersion or if you mean simply by reading and listening to English, I think that you can learn a lot. But I do think as an English learner, you have to also be quite active. When you're using passive forms of learning, um, you can make it more efficient by taking notes, by repeating things, by making flashcards after you listen. Uh, and then certainly don't forget about producing English by speaking and writing. That's an important thing to do as well. So hopefully that answered your question. Hopefully that's what you meant. Let's see. Love you from Mahmood. Hey, Bob. Long time no see. Hi, Mahmood. Just finished watching Brent's live stream and wanted to say you're doing an amazing job with your lessons. Keep it up. Well, thank you, Mahmood. I'm trying my best to do good lessons. <laughs> By the way, um, someone asked again if I'm ever going to run out of ideas for my Friday lessons. And the answer is so far, no. I, I have 11 more ideas ready to go. So we're good for Friday lessons for another few months. Uh, and I keep thinking of, I think, fairly good topics like the games topic. Those were all important things to know. If you're playing games in an English class, if you're playing games with friends, you would use all of the words and vocabulary that we learned yesterday for sure. So I will keep on. I was going to say I was going to keep on trucking. That's a kind of an informal slang phrase to mean keep on going. From Sam Walt. Hi, teacher Bob. How you doing? Good to see you again. You too. Are there any mosquitoes nearby you around? So let me re re rephrase that. Are there any mosquitoes around you or are there any mosquitoes nearby? So we would probably say one of the two. Uh, and no, thankfully, no. I'm sitting in a uh, very, very uh, dark shade. Like I'm under a tree right now. Uh, I think I'm getting shade from two different trees. Um, so, uh, I'm happy. It is windy though. A little bit windy. I don't know if you can see the microphone, the little, uh, furry thing is moving just a little bit. Uh, so I think the wind helps keep them away. Uh, here we go. Rosa says, hello, Bob. Anyways, anyway, or anyways, what is correct? I say anyways a lot. I think anyway might be more correct, but both are used equally in informal speech. And you almost only use this word when speaking. You don't often write like anyways, have a good day. But if you watch my short English lessons, sometimes when I'm editing the transcript, I start almost every paragraph with anyways. Anyways, I wanted to show you this butterfly today. Anyways, thanks for watching. Um, so you'll have to look it up. I just know that uh, I use both, okay? Um, Next question. We're going to do members only chat in about three minutes. Uh, I'm going to use my trusty spoon to push the button on my camera to make sure it doesn't fall asleep. Eduardo. Hi, Mr. Bob. What are your thoughts about learning a second in times of AI? Will machines make it obsolete? Regards from Brazil. So do you mean a second language? I think the future is this. Eventually, you won't need to learn a second language but I think it's like a decade away, or I don't think it's in our lifetime. I think for children age five or six, the technology might be so advanced by the time they're an adult. But I think for all of us, I think um, it's still good. And then in addition, they've proven that certain things are really good for your brain. Playing a musical instrument is good for your brain. Learning a second language is good for your brain. So if you want to be smart, when you're old, uh, keep learning a second language. Okay, I'm going to hit no display here. Actually, I'm going to go to River Cam and I'm going to start members only chat. And let me find the button for that. While I'm doing that, let me say thank you to all of my members. If you are not a member, you can explore membership by clicking the join button below. So there's a button somewhere that says join. If you click it, there is a video that will play explaining everything that happens if you are a member. 
Name in green during a live stream. Crown beside your name for every month that you're here. Different crown till you get the sixth highest one, I think. Um, new uh, members only video on Wednesdays. A lesson plan on Monday for the week. Things that you can try and do to have an enjoyable week of learning. Uh, and then uh, I think it's, a, I forget that there's a discount for my store as well. So if you're buying study packs or private lessons, you can get a discount if you are a member. <laughs> I think Vitor is giving me a warning in the chat. Um, so anyways, if you want to explore membership, if you're one of the 400 people watching, uh, click the join button uh, and don't leave. Members only chat is only for about 10 minutes and then I will continue answering questions uh, from the forum. So let me see here. Let me get a question from the forum while we wait for members to come up. Fred from France. Hello, or oh, Bob. Thanks for all. I learned that will is not only a modal, but a noun as well. So what will be the difference between I'll learn English and I'm willing to learn English? I have to put a two in there. So if you have a will to learn English, that's the noun form. It means you have a desire. Okay. So I have a will. Um, there's another noun too. That's why I paused there. Um, I have a strong will to exercise. I have a strong desire to exercise. Um, a will is also the noun form can be used to describe a document saying what to do with your money and property after you die. You have a will, a last will and testament. Um, but when you say I'm willing to learn, that is still the verb form, right? I'm willing to learn um, English. Sorry, I said that's the verb form. That's a tricky one though. I am good. I am willing. Yeah. I think it's just describing a state, right? It's describing the state of having the desire to learn. Okay. Let's see here. Fabian says, hi, teacher Bob. Thanks a lot for the Q and A session. Just one sec here. I'm going to check something. I'm going to log in to Nightbot and go to commands, custom warning. And I'm going to say channel member submit. So I think channel members can use it now. Maybe I had that turned off. We'll see in a minute. Okay, let me go back here. Fabian, um, I like to go to this screen, yes. Hi, Teacher Bob. Thanks a lot for this Q&A session. Could you explain to us the difference between a trip, journey, and travel? So not a lot, except trip is the most common. Travel is a general term to refer to any time you go anywhere. Trip is very specific. Like I went on a trip yesterday. I like to travel. Okay. So I'm, if I'm talking about a specific thing, I would use trip. Like, uh, in a few weeks, Jen and I are going on a trip on a Saturday. We're going away for a day. Um, journey is used more in writing or to describe a really long trip. Like he went on a long journey. Um, it's not as common. I would say trip and travel are the most common. Vitor tried to give me a warning. Didn't work. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Zhao Zue. Bob has really played a lot of games. I thought teachers don't play, didn't play games very much. I love playing games. Uh, Vitor is testing. Mode says, little heads up, Mr. Bob. Members can't use the warning function. I'm going to try it with Vitor, who's kindly volunteered to be our stuntman fall guy. So, me, I wonder if it's working now. It might have to reload or something. We'll see. Uh, Sita says, hi, Bob. It's always great when I'm able to watch Brent's live lesson and yours in a row. Great work to your teacher. Keep it up. Yes. And I think Brent and I should figure out how to do a lesson together when we're not in the same spot. New words with MP has gifted a lesson or a membership again. Thank you. And so Sam has been gifted a membership from new words with MP. Thank you very much. New words with MP. That is awesome of you. Mode has given a warning to Vitor. It's working now. <laughs> and Vitor has given me a warning. And I'm not sure what the, um, the delay is. There is a bit of a delay. I think you can only warn people every 30 seconds or so. And again, it doesn't do anything. There's no penalty at this point in time. Um, but what it will do for me is I'll have a list after a live stream of who has been warned. And then I can look at whether to do something about it. Um, let's see here. Freddie Wolf, Bob. Anyways, that is a TOC, Trouble Obsessive Compulsive, Sapusa Soigné. Um, yes, I think so. It's a bit of a, a compulsive thing. I'm going back up to Mo's comment before members. Yes, anyway is more correct. I used to say that it that way, but after having watched Bob for over two years, anyways has started to sound more natural to me. When I listen to other people, 
I hear anyways a lot more too. It might be regional, like just in my area, but I do certainly hear it. Uh, John Wedge, hello, Bob, no questions. I'm just listening to you to improve 1% today, my English to be 365% better by the end of the year. Awesome work. Um, John Wedge says, oh, don't forget to give a thumbs up, folks. Yes, correct. Give a thumbs up, please. Brent has gifted five learn English with all the... Thanks, Brent. That's awesome. So let me see here. I'm going to need my glasses for this one, Brent. Thank you for that. So Anna, Han, Rubia, Humberto, and Ming have all received memberships from Brent. Thank you so much, Brent. You are awesome. I knew that though, because you were here. I realized when you were here, you were awesome. Know that says, personal question, Bob. Will you also be creating a study pack for your business lesson? I know it's an older lesson. So the study packs. My plan is to have a study pack ready for every new Friday lesson. And then once a week, go back and pick an older lesson and create a study pack for it. When Jen is done farming at the end of October, she's going to help as as well. So we'll try to find the lessons that people find the most useful and the ones that I can create the best study packs for. So know that if you can leave a comment for me um, about exactly which business lesson, and then I will make a study pack for that for sure. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Filippo says, hi, Bob. Just thank you. You are very welcome. Freddie Wolf says, after three warnings, you can get a red card. We'll see. I haven't written a a software for a very long time, but I'll try to write some software for live streams so we can have some sort of system for that. Uh, Jose says, hi, teacher Bob. I am watching from Brazil. I'm beginning and learn a lot from you. Oh, you're a beginner and you're learning a lot. That's awesome. I'm happy that I am able to help. Uh, Mode says, oh, very cool. Memberships are being gifted all around. Yes, it's a big day for memberships, people. (laughs) There's a lot happening. So remember, you get a little week at a glance uh, tips and tricks for learning English next week, uh, Monday morning, and another video on Wednesday. Very cool. Uh, John Wedge telling Brent he's awesome, which he is. Cetus says, wow, it would be great to have you together again on camera. Even if it's not at the same place, you worked really great the last time. Yes. I haven't actually heard from Brent. Brent's gone quiet on me, but I also have not reached out to Brent. I think Brent and I were here. We had fun, went home, chatted a whole bunch via email and text for uh, two weeks afterwards. And then Brent went back to work two weeks ago for meetings, started school last week. I went back to work last week for meetings, start school this coming week. Once the dust has settled and this new school year has begun, I'm sure we'll uh, start chatting again. I'll, I should, I should, I'll send him a message right now. Let's do that. Let me see here. Sorry. I'm just saying hi, my friend, Brent. Hi, Brent. Send. I'll let you know what he says in a sec. I'll put my phone right here. Anyways, where are we at here? Um, Han says, I'm so happy to catch up with the live broadcast for the first time. It is good to have you here. My phone is falling. That's not going to work. Um, Mode says, almost signing off now. Enjoy the rest of the lesson. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good day yourself, Mode. Good to have you here. Um, and then Brent says, sorry, the beginning of a new school year is always busy. Bob knows this well. Yes, it is. You're speaking about formal and informal English, we would say it's insane, um, the beginning of the school year. There is so much work to do. It can be a little overwhelming. Uh, let's see here. Let's get a question on the screen and I'll keep checking the chat here. Um, (laughs) Brent's response, uh, Brent's response is, who is this (laughs) smiley face? (laughs) Oh, that's funny. Jed says, hi, Bob. My childhood was not so happy because my parents are teachers. So do you have something like special teaching plan for your children? You know, it's hard for kids when their parents are teachers because their friends all know that their parents are teachers. So no, we just try to be as open about it as possible with our kids. Um, let's see here. Um, no, that says, thanks, Bob. I'm, I will leave you the comment. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Mode says, Brent reply to him with, sorry, who is that again? (laughs) Okay. Bye for now. And then no, that says to mode, have a nice weekend. Um, yeah, I'm going to turn members only chat off. I will answer questions from members for a couple minutes yet, but I just want to take care of that. We'll go back to subscriber mode. Um, 
And then let's do another question from over here. And then Mode in the chat says, what? No way. I thought the same thing, Brent. Oh, and above Brent says to Mode, you know me so well. Yes. <laughs> Who is this? So anyways, Kurdish, my beloved Uncle Bob, hi. Could you suggest some British TV series for me to watch and imitate for learning the accent? Well, don't watch Annika. I'm watching a show called Annika right now because it takes place in Scotland. So the accent's rather thick and hard to understand. Um, I did thoroughly enjoy though other shows with Nicola Walker in it. I think she was in MI5 and I think a few other shows. Um, so I would watch, look for that actress, Nicola Walker. Uh, and any show she is in is usually very, very well done. Freddie Wolf in the chat says, Bob, are you going to have some students you have had last year or do you have only new ones? Both. Because I teach every level of French, I get usually the same students each year, but I have a different class where I'm teaching computers. I'll have some brand new students, students that I've never met before. Uh, let's see here. From Mr. Azos. Hello, Bob. How are you today? We don't eat pork in my country. So I was just wondering if there's a burger made with pork. So you, you really want to ask at the restaurant. Um, most hamburgers are made with beef. Some hamburgers though have some pork mixed with beef. So if you are not going, if you don't eat pork, it's very important that you ask at the restaurant. The other thing to watch out for is we often put bacon on our hamburgers, which is a pork product. Or sometimes the oil or grease they use to fry things might be from pork or from pigs. So just go in. In Canada, we have very strict laws. They have to list everything that's in the food you buy and eat. Okay. So usually you can go in and say and ask exactly what the ingredients are. So um, let's see here. So Redfish says, please don't turn on members only mode. So there has to be some reward for people who support the channel. And one of the rewards is during a one hour live stream, 10 minutes of members only chat. And I know it can seem a little strange, like they get something everyone else doesn't, but do remember this members allow me to make better lessons for you. Membership fees are used to pay for fast internet, good cameras, a gimbal that helped me make a really fun short video the other day. So members get some treats, some perks, but they also help make everything else better for all of you. So I do really appreciate them. Uh, let's see here. Next question from Alexi. Hello, teacher Bob. Thanks for your hard work. Can you please explain the difference between distract and divert? So. I think you're talking about someone's attention. So if the dog barks, it would distract me. Okay. I would look away, but if Jen yells at me, she might be trying to divert my attention. Okay. Which is similar, but it's more intentional. So again, the wind is a bit distracting, but someone can decide to divert your attention. So, um, like I try to divert your attention to the live stream whenever I'm doing it. Uh, let's see here from hockey. Hello, Bob. This is a big question. What is your expectation about the future of the world? Do you feel optimistic or pessimistic? Thank you so much. No matter what happens, I'm always optimistic. Okay. No matter what happens, the world has been kind of weird for the last four or five years. I don't know if you've noticed, there's been a lot of strange things going on, but I'm still very positive. I think the world is becoming a better place. Absolutely. Hey, I did want to pause to say one thing. I should have an, a, a screenshot for this, but I don't. Um, I am also uploading videos now on a platform called Billy Billy in China. I just want to let you know that that is the official Bob the Canadian channel in China. So if you see my videos in other places, that's not me. But if you go to, let me see here, the username on Billy Billy is Bob dash the dash Canadian on Billy Billy. So if you see that, 
That's me. That's really me. And my plan for those of you that are watching is to upload all my new videos there each week, two a week, but also one or two old videos every week until my entire library is there. So uh, if you are a Chinese viewer, let everyone know that there is an official channel in China. Please watch it. From Michael, hello, Mr. Bob. How would you call the process of putting grain into a bin or getting it out in Canada? Have a great weekend. So we generally describe it. Can you hear the airplane? It's kind of, it's always an airplane on Saturdays. Um, we would just call it putting it in or taking it out. We would say, when we take it out though, we might use unload. I need to unload the grain bin. Although I, I don't think so. I think we would just say empty. I need to empty the grain bin. We need to fill the grain bin and we need to empty the grain bin. Um, I hope the wind isn't affecting the microphone too much and I hope you can still see me. Um, let's see if the camera's still working. Oh, nice. Focuses in, focuses out. Um, let's see here. I'm losing track of what I'm doing because it's getting windy. The wind is distracting. That was supposed to be an example. <laughs> now it's coming true. Um, Philippo says, hi, Bob, no question today. Just want to say hello and thank you. But you can help me, by the way, telling Brent to check my message on Slack. I think if Brent's here, he will have heard that now. Um, I'm not sure if he has Slack or Discord. I know he has Discord um, and maybe he'll get a chance. From Ashik, hello, sir, I'm from Bangladesh. This is one of the beautiful countries, cool. We love your, all your classes. We hope you visit us all the time. We invite you. Thank you. Someday I will travel. I don't think I'll get to every country in the world, but we'll see how things go someday. The next country I'm going to visit is the United States, and I'm going to visit it next summer to see Brent. I promise. Aria, hi, Teacher Bob. Can you explain the meaning of this phrase, when hell freezes over? Thanks. Have a nice day. So first of all, Hell is considered by some people to be a swear word, so you want to be careful. But it means basically never. If you're familiar with the place that is referred to as hell, it's supposed to be a very hot place that people go to after they die if they've been bad. It's full of fire and heat. So if someone says, um, if someone said to me, will you go parachuting? I'll say, when hell freezes over. Basically, it means no. I will never do that because it would be uh, hell will never freeze over. That's basically it. But again, be careful. Um, that's not a word that we use in normal everyday English. If you if you're someone who likes to swear, you might use it, but most people would not. From Fabiana. Hi, Bob. How can we get out of the plateau stage studying a language? Thanks a lot. So here's the graph of learning. You learn and learn and you're excited and you're, you know more and more and more. And then eventually the graph flattens out and you're working really hard, but you're not getting better at what you're doing. This can happen in exercise as well. So I always recommend this. If you've hit a plateau, you need to do something different. So if you don't have an English speaking partner, get one. If you haven't been listening to music in English, start doing that. If of the three things or the four things you're doing, you haven't been reading a lot. Start reading more than speaking, listening, and writing. Um, so change the pattern up because that will make your brain um, better at learning new things. That's what I would do. Uh, let's see here. Got to get the next question. From Yas Yasitha. Hey, Bob, are there, are there any animals on your farm? So are and on. Hi, Bob. Are there any animals on your farm? Uh, yes, we have goats. Uh, we have one old sheep and we have many cats and we have two dogs and we have 10 chickens, I think. Mohammed says, what is the meaning of candy eyes? Don't know. I have not heard that phrase before. Maybe it's a British phrase, so I don't know. Uh, Benicio says, hi, Bob. Could you please recommend how to study English better? Thanks. So a lot of this is just from my experience learning French, but I think it relates to learning English as well. Number one, for me, having a routine was really good. Having an hour a day, six days a week where I studied was really good. 
six days a week. I don't know what this thumb was doing. Um, number two, make sure you're doing some reading, writing, listening, and speaking, learning vocabulary, and reading up a little bit on grammar. Okay. So, uh, and then the last thing would be find a book in your own language that explains English grammar well. I think that's very, very, very um, important. I think that's a good thing to do. It's just nice to have all of the funny little rules explained in your own language. And there's more. And I do have a video if you search for the best way to learn English in my humble opinion by Bob the Canadian, you will find a, a video on how to study English. From Carmen. How's the weather in Canada year round? Well, it depends. In the summer, it's really hot, 30, 32 degrees Celsius. In the winter, it's really cold, minus five, minus 10, sometimes minus 20. In the fall, it's beautiful. And in the spring, it's beautiful. Tan or green and lush out right now. It's very nice. Next question is from Phony mode eggs. Hi. Hello, everybody. Great to see you, Mr. Bob. Talking about anyways, do you have some other filler words that you overuse? What is the best way to get rid of them? Thanks. So I don't try to get rid of them because I, I can't, but I do say so a lot. So if I walk up to a student, you are all awesome. By the way, this only works because all of you watch. So you can say I'm awesome. I appreciate the compliment, but all 463 of you are awesome too because you're here making this lesson a success. It's a lot of fun. Uh, from Mr. Sherwani, hi, wisest teacher Bob from Kurdistan. Have a fantastic day. I hope you do too. I have one question. Are you optimistic? If so, what do you do to stay positive? Thanks. So I am optimist. Wow, I am really using this a lot, aren't I? I am optimistic. <laughs> I, am opti I am optimistic only when I eat healthy food, when I exercise, and when I get enough sleep, which is most of the time. I work really hard at walking for exercise, getting eight to nine hours of sleep, and eating healthy. If I don't do those three things, I do become a little more pessimistic. So that is what I do to stay positive. Go for a walk every day if you can. Um, eat healthy food, get a good night's sleep every night. From Hakon, hey Bob, do you think technological developments such as instant translation will make people lazy who are eager, eager to learn a language? I think so. Unfortunately, I think translation isn't quite there yet. That means it's not quite fast enough. And I always, I always put it this way. Translation by AI has to become seamless. That means it has to be instant you have to be able to joke around. You have to be able to even flirt. That means like when you like someone romantically, um, you would need to be able to do those very human things in a way where it's very natural. And I don't know if AI will get there quickly or get there at all. Um, we'll see. I'm not sure what the future is. I could be wrong, but um, I think it's similar to this. Um, what was I going to use as an example? Yeah, I can't think of one. I, I think it will get really useful for business, but maybe not for socializing. That might be it. Hi, Bob. What I schwa sound, schwa sound. So I'm not sure what the question is. Maybe the question is how to pronounce the schwa sound. We'll see. Let me look that up. Bob likes to cheat. So, yeah, yeah, I'm not super familiar with that. I'm just going to skip that one. Sorry. Sometimes Bob skips the questions when it's late in the lesson and he doesn't know how to answer it. Um, here we go. Next question from Pavlo. Hi, Bob. Watching you from Ukraine. Thanks for your hard work. I was wondering, do you know any other language besides English? Take care. Oui, je parle français, mais c'est tu. Il y a aucune autre langue que je parle. There's no other language that I speak. Um, I tried learning a little bit of Dutch. It didn't work. I tried learning a little bit of Chinese. It didn't work. Um, puis je vais continuer à parler français, c'est tu. 
c'est tout pour moi. Je suis trop, uh, trop âgé. Can I say that? I'm too old to learn another language. But that being said, I do continually work on my French. So I read the news in French. I speak French once a week uh, avec mon ami, uh, with my friend. I, uh, I sometimes have my phone in French or my computer in French for a few months so that I know all the words. So um, yes, I continue doing that. In the chat, Miller says, I saw you can reply to Chinese comments. Yes, on Billy Billy, I'm level two now. I can reply to comments. I have been replying to comments now, letting people know that I'm the real Bob the Canadian in China. From Nikita, do you know Russian people in person which moved to Canada and got rid of the accent? So I've fixed a few things there. There are not many people who moved to Canada as adults and then lose their accent. So my grandparents had a Dutch accent. The person we bought seed from had a German accent. Um, my childhood is filled with memories of people who immigrated to Canada who spoke perfect English but still had a little bit of an accent. So there are a lot of Hungarians that live in this area, Ukrainians that live in this area, Italians that live in this area. Um, there are people from India that live in this area. There are people from China that live in this area. Everyone speaks really good English with a slight accent. So you can reduce your accent, but I think it's challenging as an adult. Uh, sorry, I just saw in the chat, someone said something wrong with the internet connection. Is it just me? Probably just you, Jed. Is that Jed? Yes. Okay, we're going to be wrapping this up in a bit. Let me do a few more questions. Four left. Um, Tran says, can you please make more videos about the medical terms? I just watched one of yours this morning. Thank you so much. I am going to redo that lesson in a week or two. So hold tight. Uh, that will be coming. I will do another lesson on medical terms. Uh, in in Jolie, hi Bob, thanks for your lesson. Would you let me know what is your passion to learn other languages? So I love learning French. The reason I like learning French is because I, I often describe it as, for me, learning a language is like a gigantic puzzle that will take, it will take my whole life to finish. I'm pretty good at the puzzle right now though. So I like the challenge of learning a language very 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 fun for me some people like learning a language because they want to travel i do that as i have that as well but um definitely yeah i like the the big puzzle claudio hi bob what is your opinion about grammar in language learning do you recommend it and if so what does the level from where we have to start studying grammar so again my common response is this uh, oh i need my spoon my camera it's not off for you guys but it's off for me there we go. Now I can see the screen again. Do you like my handy spoon? It's well used, this spoon. If you look at this end, we've actually worn it out a bit. I think we've had this spoon since we got married. It's not dirty. We wash it after we use it, but it is well used. Um, my opinion is this. Getting a book in your own language that explains English grammar can be extremely valuable. So if you are going to study grammar, which I think you should, do buy a book that explains in your own language some of the crazy parts of English grammar. I just think that is super, super helpful um, because reading an English explanation for an English grammar concept might not be super helpful for you. It might just be way better to, um, yeah, to find that book. So for me, as a French learner, Having a book written in English that explains French grammar is very helpful for me. At this point, having a book written in French explaining French grammar works. My level is high enough. I have a B2 level, um, but definitely if you can do that. Uh, let's see here. I am done all the questions from the form. I'm going to let you guys have a look at the river. I'm going to put my little face up in the corner again. Is that okay? Uh, and I'm going to have a sip of water and then I'm going to uh, end the lesson in about a minute. I have managed to answer all the questions. Let's see how many were there today. 54 questions. So I answer about a question a minute. That's usually my average. I try not to uh, talk for too long when I'm answering questions because if I can't explain it in a minute, 
I don't know if it's worth the explanation that I give. Anyways, let's see here. John Wedge says to Adriano's questions, schwa sound is using the word intention, for instance. Intention. Oh, yeah, 10. The sound in the end of the word is called schwa. Shun. Got it. I should study my, uh, my pronunciation stuff. Uh, let's see here. Uh, no, that says I can recommend it. Two, I'd follow this tip. Yes, about grammar. Uh, is this live? Yes, this is live. It's like, it's, it's going to be over in a minute though. It's 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am live. That's from Bong Bong, I think. I need my glasses here. Uh, Brent's answering saying it's live. Brent says, wow, 54 questions. Impressive. Well, I hope it's impressive. Sometimes I go back and I listen to some of the answers I gave and I think, ah, it's not the greatest answer. So, um, let's see. Thank you, Bob. Big spoon. Yes. How old are you? I'm 52 years old. I from Ukraine. Could you create a vocab lesson about war? I will do that at some point. It is on the list. Freddie Wolf. So before you wrap up, I want to thank you and wish you a great weekend. You too. New words with MP says bye. Have a nice day. Yeah. Let's wrap this up for everybody. A uh, couple things. If you're new here, there is a subscribe button there. I do have a store at bobthecanadian.com. I am going to mention that almost during every live stream. Uh, there are study packs there for seven of my lessons now. A study pack usually has the original slides if it's a Friday lesson like this one. Uh, and then it also has uh, like a crossword puzzle, a transcript if it's a Tuesday video, fill in the blanks, matching activities. It has a whole bunch of stuff you can use to practice what you learn in the lesson. Or if you're an English teacher, you can use it in your classroom. So anyways, John Wedge says, thank you so much, Bob, for this live stream. Have a nice weekend, you too. Uh, and I'm going to start saying, I think I'm going to start saying bye now. So if you say bye in the chat, I will say bye to you. There's a bug on my lens. Can I use the spoon to make it go away? Yes, there, it's gone. I wasn't waving with my spoon. <laughs> uh, Arena says bye. Uh, Hector says bye. Let's see here. Hi from Chile. Know that says thanks, Bob, for the lesson. Have a great day and weekend. Greetings to Jen and the family. Thanks. Know that. Have a good day. Bye, Dimitri, Arena, Judith, Vitor, Sam Wu, Lolly Lolly, Song. Know that. Filippo, Freddie Wolf, Talk Italian. Um, Freddie Wolf, thanks for the super chat. That is appreciated. I must have missed that, but I do appreciate support. Bye to Talk Italian with Arone, Tron, Ulia. Gorov, Julie, Vitor, Lolly Lolly, I think I said already, Jed, John, Miller, Jepeng, Ian, Andre, Abduvoid, um, Imal, Vivi. I'm trying to pick out the names I haven't said yet. Uh, anyways, and I will eventually have an outro. Uh, the outro will be, let's see here. I'll, I'll make an outro right now. Let's see if I can do that. Um see if i can find here we go add that add that oh i don't want that one you guys can watch me uh you guys can watch me learn something while i'm doing it add source add a new source yes and we want it to say let's see here where do i type oh visit Bob the Canadian, I better spell it right, dot com. And then we should make it bigger, I think. Oh, yeah, look at that. How do I make it so it's easier to see? Uh, let's see here. I wonder if I can put a background behind it. Background color. Oh, yes, I can put a background color. It should be orange, I think, of some kind. Done. Oh, that didn't work. Anyways, I, I'm going to stop playing around during a live stream. Thanks for watching. Visit BobTheCanadian.com if you want to see what is available there. You can also buy a private message from me if that's something that interests you. It certainly was fun to make. I've done a few of them already. They're really fun. I go outside. I talk to the camera to you. Send you a private message. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. See you uh, Tuesday with a new lesson next Friday with a live lesson. Um, hopefully the first week of school goes well for me. Bye. I'll leave you with the river view for a bit and I'll remove me from the screen.